in tonight and um, while I get us set up on the prepared homestead, um, I'll just tell you what we're going to be making. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to make an oxymel. And because of the ingredients that we're using, this is going to be a really, really good thing for colds and flus. And, you know, you can always use stuff like that, right? One second. There we go. All right, so this is going to be elderberry and elderflower oxymel. If you don't know what an oxymel is, it is uh, basically a mixture of the, the menstruum, or the, the liquid that you're infusing something into, is going to be honey and apple cider vinegar. These both have amazing benefits, as well as, hello, um, as well as the herb themselves. So... I'm just going to get over here so I can make sure I see if anybody comments on the prepared homestead while I give time for everybody to show up. I can't find, oh, there we go. All right, so I guess we'll get right into it. I can, uh, a few things about honey. If you're using raw honey, that's really important. Just try to use local raw honey because it's going to have the most nutrients. It's not going to be blended in with like corn syrup and all the weirdness that they do nowadays. Um, honey in and of itself, look at my notes here. It's a cough suppressant. It is soothing, which is so, so true. When I am sick or if I have a sore throat, um, to get some garlic in me, I chop up garlic and stick it in some honey and put that on toast. And not only does the garlic work to really boost the immune system and just like burn everything away, but the honey I find is extremely soothing to my throat. So that is definitely true. It is antifungal and antibacterial. So this is really just like a power liquid here. Hi, Dad. And then we have apple cider vinegar. You've probably heard a lot about apple cider vinegar. Uh, I know people will put a tablespoon of it in their water every morning, and that supposedly helps you lose weight. Um, that, that's not really what we're talking about here, but some of the, the benefits of this is uh, it's antiseptic, antibacterial, it's good for coughs, colds, and infections. So again, having the raw honey and then having the apple cider vinegar along with elderberry and elderflower is going to be basically a, a super, super high powered um, cold and flu medicine. And the great thing about it is if you accidentally take too much, you don't have to call poison control. So this is really great to replace cough syrup, uh, even immune boosting things. I mean, you, you could do it with, with that stuff, I suppose. but. Uh, if you really want to just go, go natural and really effective, this is the way to go. All right, so we're going to start by doing half of this jar of herbs, about a third to half. And what I'm going to do is do two-thirds of that half, if that makes sense, um, elderberries. So I'm going to have to... I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably good. And then one-third elder flowers. All right. I don't know. It's hard to tell. And this is the folk method. If you want to get scientific with it, then go find that somewhere else. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, but seriously, this really is like your romantic just a little bit out now. Um, so because this is the folk method, you can mix it in whatever way that you like. So if you want to add more honey to it, that's fine. If you want it to be more vinegar, that's fine. You know, do whatever works for you. So you got like a third to a half a jar of the herbs. The remaining third is going to be the honey. So this is going to be slow and painful here as I try to, to squeeze a bunch of honey into this. I put quite a bit of herb too, so I'm hoping this is gonna work out because, you know, everything's gotta go wrong on live, right? 
I actually just made one of these oxymels at um, our herb school on Saturday, and I did a sage one, and I just smelled it, and it's smelling delicious. I also made, this has nothing to do with the video, but um, a lavender infused honey, which it's just, it's so good. I loved infused honeys so much. I honestly, like, I could just eat them all day long. Like I said earlier, garlic infused, uh, and then you get things like lavender infused, or um, you can really infuse anything into into honey, and it'll be delicious. Uh, don't forget your trusty tool, the chopstick, and you're gonna stir this in. And I need to put some more honey. Obviously, I'm just trying to make space here. And again, with this kind of stuff, you just gotta do what works for you. So we'll wait for the honey to decide to come down here. And then once, once you get the amount of honey that you want to get, uh, you're going to be adding the apple cider vinegar, but do it slowly. Kind of like, I don't know if anybody else can relate to this experience, but making chocolate milk out of the powder, I don't do it anymore, but you know how you want to stir in just a little bit of liquid to make it into more of a paste before you just, because if you just dump like eight ounces of milk in there, it's going to be all clumpy and it's not going to be fully incorporated. A similar thing is going to happen to the oxymel. I mean, it will mix eventually. It just makes your life a little bit easier if you make sure that you're adding a little bit of liquid at a time. Another important thing with apple cider vinegar is you want to get stuff that's alive. So hopefully it's organic raw and unfiltered. It should have kind of an icky looking film in it. That's called the mother. Um, it has something to do with like the fermenting process. If you want to know more about that, Google it because I can't give you the specific details, but I did read a little thing about it um, saying how it was, it used, again, I like this could be true or not true, but like uh, around 2000 years ago, the name means um, honey and acid, you know, so I, that makes sense, at least for oxymel. But with apple cider vinegar, it was actually wine that what, I had like yeast added to it, and then it was fermented some more. Again, <laughs> don't take my word for it, but the point is it is very acidic, and it has a very, it does have a strong flavor, but I think mixed in with the honey and with the herbs infusing, it, it really does make a nice flavor. So again, I'm just adding little bits at a time and then stirring it up. And then, I, I realize I'm not really telling you what I'm doing. Okay, so the overview is a third to half a jar of herb and then add a third of the jar honey and then fill up the rest with the apple cider vinegar. So it's honestly, it's so, so simple. Even like beginner herbalists like myself, it is almost foolproof. Like, honestly, it's just great. So then once it's done, which I got everything pretty well mixed in here, fill that up to the top. And voila, you've got the beginnings of an oxymel. So, next to cover, this is actually kind of important. You either want to use a plastic lid or a metal lid with parchment separating the metal and the acid, just because the, the acid in the apple cider vinegar will begin to break down the lid and um, the rubber part, and you don't want that stuff seeping into your oxymel because who wants to eat rubber, you know? That's not really that great. All right, so we've got this, and what you're going to do is shake it every day for about a week, and after that time, you're going to let it sit for about four weeks. Uh, and we have the recipe, if you go into the description of this video, we have the recipe in our free herbal content. 
uh, follow that link and it'll give you all the details. Um, I've got this, and another important thing is to label. Mom prepared this for me. So this just says elderberry slash flower, oxymel, and then today's date, and that's it. Um, one thing that you can do if you want to with labeling is put the date that you're gonna strain it. So, um, let me see, one second. Put that in the jar. It's just so you don't have to do the mental math. It's, yeah. Um, but that's that's totally optional. Just do whatever is going to work for you. But I would highly recommend making sure that you label because we have before not done like not labeled and then gone. Um, what is this? I don't remember what we did because you just expect that you're going to remember. But we make so many different herbal preparations that they all get lost in there and yeah. So it's important to label. So um, I didn't really go over the benefits of the elderberries and the flowers, but I'll give you the basics. The berries, they uh, assist the immune system. Oh, hi, Kim. Hi, Ken. Um, they assist the immune system in fighting viruses, and they have antioxidants, meaning they're going to be good for the liver and to help um, all that stuff happen. Uh, the flower acts as an antihistamine, so it can help with... Um, Allergies, you know, you know, get to the pollen season. You can take this, and it's going to help soothe. And honestly, the whole mixture because you have the honey that soothes, and then you've got the vinegar that has antibacterial, antifungal, um, and then you've got both the berries and the flowers. This is just a a little power oxymel here. Um, and even the elder flowers are soothing to the mucosal lining. So they're even going to help soothe a sore throat. They're going to help repair that mucosal lining, as well as the honey doing a lot of soothing in and of itself. So there's tons and tons of benefits. Again, we go into more detail about the recipe uh, in our free herbal content. And I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, this, it's again, it's so, so simple. I myself am a beginner herbalist, and even I can do this, and I am teaching you how to do this. So if I can do it, you can do it. And um, until next time, health and joy.